Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Joshua 7. <clears throat> We're going to be starting in verse 12 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. So now God tells uh, Joshua that the sin is in the camp. And now we get to verse 12 and he says, Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but they turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more except you destroy the accursed from among you. Now, the children of Israel were warned back in chapter 3 and verse 18 that if they took of anything that was in Jericho that was to be either burned or dedicated to God, then the accursedness that was put on Jericho would transfer to the people. And this is exactly what happened. Now, there's a similar warning in Deuteronomy 7 and verses 24 through 26. Now, in Deuteronomy 7, 24 to 26, uh, here it is concerning the idols of the Gentile nations. God warns the children of Israel concerning you're going to go into the promised land and they're going to have idols. So he's warning them about the idols. The children of Israel were to utterly destroy their idols. And if they didn't, then the curse that God put on their idols would now be put upon them. The Hebrew word for cursed and accursed in both Joshua and Deuteronomy is the same exact Hebrew word. And it means to be devoted or dedicated to destruction. Now, this is what happens. <clears throat> this is what happens when we desire to make the lusts and the pleasures of this world our own. Like Samson, the power of God is gone from our life and we don't even know why. You become captured by your enemy and they remove your ability to see things spiritually. Oh yeah, they take your spirit. The enemy will take out your spiritual eyes and you can't see anything anymore. But worst of all, is that because of hidden sin in the heart, God will refuse to work on our behalf anymore until the sin is dealt with. Listen, the issue, the issue with God isn't that we sin. God knows that we will always sin, but it is what we do after we sin. Do we truly hate what we did and confess it to God and repent of it? Or do we secretly like doing that sin? And even if we do confess it to God, we still want to enjoy that sin in the future. The only way fellowship with God will be restored is by doing what God said. Except, you. what did God say? God said, unless you destroy the accursed thing from among you. This is almost exactly what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13 in reference to the Corinthians. And what they should do about the man who was sinning with his mother. Sin is a, sin in our lives must be dealt with. Listen, we can't play with sin if we want to be a testimony for, for Christ. We can't goof around and play with sin and harbor it and, and, and take it out when we want to and for a little bit here and there. And, and play with our sinful desires. You can't do it if we're going to be a testament. I'm telling you, 
It's like a little fox in the heart. This is a, it's a small little thing that we, we think it is, but to God's eyes, it's big. It'll destroy you. Now that God has told Joshua that the problem is sin in the camp, God is going to give Joshua instructions of what to do to cleanse out the sin from the camp and how God's presence and blessings will be restored to the people. Now let's read verse 13 and it says, Up, sanctify the people and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow for Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of you. O Israel, you cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. Now, the first thing that needs to be done in the sanctifying of the people, yeah, I'm sorry, it's, it's, the first thing needs to be done is the people themselves need to be sanctified. God will be present at the judging of the offender. And where God's presence is, the people also must be sanctified. In Exodus chapter 19, Exodus chapter 19, let's read Exodus 19 verses 10 and 11. Exodus 19, 10 and 11 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. God told Moses that on the third day, he was coming down in the sight of all the people and that what they needed to be sanctified. God's coming. It's like, you know, some important person's coming to your house. You're not going to let them see the dust and the, and the junk on the floor. You're going to clean up the house. Well, that's what God's presence is coming. We need to be sanctified. God told Moses in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 5 to take off his shoes because the place where he was standing is holy. We do not know exactly what the children of Israel did to sanctify themselves, but at the very least, they were to get their hearts right with God. Joshua told them that the reason they were defeated at Ai was because someone took Someone took stuff from Jericho and they were not that stuff that they weren't supposed to take. The people would realize that the fault was not in God, but it was actually in them. They would have to change their minds about what they were, what they have been thinking about God since the defeat of Ai. And again, as I said, it's human nature. Once something goes wrong, we want to blame God. Yeah, now the children of Israel, they're going to be told the problem isn't with God. The problem's in, in the camp. And now they're going to have to say, uh-oh, <laughs> for the last however day or two or however long it was, I've been accusing God of this. And it's not his fault. It's our fault. But, but this is the same thing that is, is, is within us. Something goes wrong in our life. We want to immediately blame God. Then the Holy Spirit moves in our heart to show us that the sin is actually in us. We need to repent of our blaming God and remember that God is holy and sinless and very gracious and kind. Verse 14, In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord takes shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the Lord shall take shall come 
by households, and the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. Now, it says here, in the morning, in the morning. Now, Achan, Achan had plenty of time to go to Joshua and to repent, but his hard, stubborn, greedy heart deceived him into thinking that maybe God doesn't really know everything and see everything, and he can maybe possibly get away with it. And this is a very great mistake that both the saved and the unsaved make when it comes to harboring sin in our hearts. We think God may not see it. Ah, oh, it's just a little thing. In 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9, it says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Oh, he sees everything. Oh, yeah. Hebrews 4.13, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things, listen, all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. All things, God sees it all. Come on, God sees all. We see, God knows your thoughts weeks and months and years. God probably knows all the thoughts that you are going to think before you were ever born. Our wicked hearts deceive us into thinking that God doesn't see it or that a gracious, loving God will let us play with this sin for a while. No, God's plan for our life is moving forward and it doesn't include sin. Therefore, this sin must be dealt with, and it must be dealt with now. We're going to finish in verse 15, and it says here, And it came to pass, I'm sorry, And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burned with fire, he and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has wrought folly in Israel. Now, Back in chapter 7 and verse 1, we see that Achan was warned, but he still took those things. He was warned. He still took them, though. Achan sinned willingly. He cannot plead ignorance. And Achan knew, Achan knew he was doing wrong because why? Because he hid the things in his tent. But every day, professing Christians do the same thing. God clearly tells us not to love the world. But how much of the pleasures and the sparkling things of this world do they hide in their heart? And sad to say, many still Many still prefer this world over Christ. Many prefer the, the, the pleasures and the lusts of this world as more desirous than the blessings of God, than the provisions of God. And it says here in verse uh, 15 that he should be burned with fire. Punishment by burning was not something new. We see that in Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 14, chapter 21 and verse 9, and 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 16. And then it says in verse 15, and all that he has, and all that Achan has. Now, this meant his possessions and even his family. It is believed that his family knew about what Achan did, and they also said nothing. What was done to Jericho is now is now being done to Achan. It's a complete destruction, complete destruction of Achan and his family, all of his possessions. I mean, we're talking complete destruction. You know, sin, sin needs to be burned out of our life. 
Otherwise, sin will destroy us. It doesn't mean we lose our salvation, but it may result in an earthly death. We harbor sin and we refuse over and over again to give that sin to God, to, to confess it and repent and be cleansed. We keep harboring it. It could mean an early death. And then it says, uh, for they have wrought folly in Israel. Now, the Hebrew word for folly means wickedness. Wickedness. Listen, in God's view, this wasn't, it wasn't what Achan did in God's view wasn't just sin. It was wickedness. You have to understand, God in God's view, what Achan did, we see it as, well, he just took a little bit here and a little there, and he, you know, probably put it under his jacket there, and uh, and then he went to his tent and hid it there. I mean, that's just a little thing. No. In God's eyes, it's not just, it's not sin. It's wickedness. Wicked. What he did was wicked. All right, we're going to continue in verse 16, next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.